machine that addresses all of those components provides that initial initial start of balance. The other thing that it does is it actually takes care of some of the biggest pieces. And if we can take care of some of those biggest pieces that don't currently have structures in place, um, that's one of the biggest steps we can do in this session. There are other things to do, uh, but having all of those components into one single bill uh, provides us with the simplicity of dealing with the impacts to lower income Alaskans as well as impacts to higher income Alaskans. Good morning, Nat Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. <clears throat> um, on the subject of the legislature's budget, um, I did want to ask Representative Keto, what is what is the justification for um, the Juno legislators claiming per diem during the session? Uh, thank you, Nat. So one of the things that was discussed when the transition took place, the legislature used to have a much lower salary, but was able to get interim per diem, which technically is not per diem, it's just a, a, a rate for being in your office. And the amount of money that was uh, paid out varied by legislator depending how much time they were spending in the office. There were concerns at some level of some legislators taking advantage of that system. When the system was restructured, they were looking at how do we make it much more equitable as far as salary, but then we also have to accommodate the activities of the legislature. Um, per diem, actually, the long-term per diem helps accommodate the long-term activities of the legislature. Um, in regard to authorizing a reduced per diem for the Juno legislators, the uh, thinking process was that when we are here in session, even though we are in Juno, because we are citizen legislature, each one of us has other jobs, but because we're fully engaged during session, that we don't have the ability to actually participate in those other ways to generate revenue. And so per diem was a recognition of the fact that um, my life is fully consumed with the legislative process during the 90 days we are here in Juneau. Austin Baird from PTUU again. Uh, on the, back to House Bill 115, do you have any concerns about brushing up against the single subject rule or issues of compactness given that it deals with income tax and restructuring the permanent fund? Uh, any concerns that that may brush up against the single subject rule? Well, thank you for that question. And, and we're going to have the Department of Law um, up on Wednesday, I believe, to uh, talk to us about that. But the title of the act is um, State Re uh, Revenue Restructuring Act, and that's what we're doing. We have three sources of revenue. We have uh, the distribution from the earnings, a structured way of doing that. And then we have um, money that's coming from the PFD, that reduction in maintenance and protection of the PFD. And then we also have the broad-based tax, which in this case is the income tax. So uh, also the permanent fund dividend can be used as a prepayment, um, basically a credit against uh, any um, income tax a person would um, have and so we don't have um, problems with that being within a single subject. Andrew Kitchenman, Alaska Public Radio Network. How important is it for the House majority to uh, have uh, either a broad-based tax or a and or a oil tax changes? And what, is it possible that the uh, majority would vote for a permanent fund restructuring without uh, one or both of the other elements? First, <clears throat> I would point out, I think as we have uh, mentioned repeatedly, that our caucus is uh, non-binding in terms of how our, our members are required to vote. Um, the topics that you have raised, raised uh, we believe, are all sort of foundational elements towards taking those decisive steps to resolving uh, uh, the fiscal challenge that's in front of the state. Um, I think we've seen evidence um, uh, Department of Labor statistics to the Chamber of Commerce uh, representations to uh, the trade organizations to uh, members of the business community that have been through Juneau already that the economy at large is, is flattening in Alaska. It's slowing down. 
of the term recession now is being commonly used. We think as a coalition that uh, we have to look at those major elements. We have to look at uh, uh, downsizing the budget in a smart way. We have to look at uh, taking an unsustainable uh, oil tax credit system and uh, re-examining it and deciding what's best for uh, you know, keeping the oil patch competitive while at the same time treating the state treasury in a, in a fair manner. And, um, you know, the, the bigger part of all that is going to be uh, using some of the earnings of the permanent fund to bridge that gap of what today is, I think, about a $2.7 billion deficit. So you, you look at um, all those elements, and uh, we're committed to uh, uh, taking a hard look at all, all of them this session. And, and I'd just say that the, one of the other problems that we had last year was that we were only looking at the permanent fund dividend reduction. And that then is the problem where it impacts one segment of the Alaska uh, families much more than having a combined set. That's why we have an income tax and the PFD uh, maintenance um, in the same bill so that we can get a fair and balanced uh, equitable system across the state. So those are really important. And the other portion is the oil tax credits. They dig a huge hole of future liabilities. In other words, we can't control that. It just depends on how much they, money they spend, and we get a liability of 35% of all basically all the money that the oil companies decide to spend at a time. And so to try to develop a plan that will be sustainable for Alaska over the the long term and then have this huge potential liability out there in the law that we can't control means that that's why we need to make sure that we get that if we're going to have a plan that's sustainable over time. Liz Rains with KTVA again. Last year the governor's plan to restructure the permanent fund died in the House Finance Committee. Do you believe that this new proposal has the support to move out this year? Well, Liz, I think I just explained that what was critically missing last year was any uh, equitable, balanced consideration of impact on disparate members of the community. I mean, we wouldn't pass an income tax by itself. We wouldn't pass the PFD reduction by itself. What we're trying to do is get something fair and balanced that is is good for all Alaskans and fills our budget to maintain a vibrant economy. If we don't have a vibrant economy and we extend this um, recession for 10 years by just doing budget cuts, uh, that is not a responsible thing, we believe, for the legislature to do. Oh, you know, the, the the way a bill works, and it's a finance committee bill, it's in the committee, and the committee will look at all of those levers and may adjust them uh, one way or another. The, all of those provisions are up for amendment. We've got it on the table. We're looking at it. Um, and so I have no idea at this point in time, the original bill, whether it would move out of committee in exactly the form it is. But that's the committee process. We take forward an idea multiple ideas and then they work on those to balance them and make sure that we can get committee support to move the bill out. I think in the end we will move bill out whether it's in exactly the same form it is now or not. No one knows because that's the committee process. We'll move this week. There is no intention of moving House Bill 115 this week. We're uh, having hearings, we're having um, economists, we're having Department of Law, we're having revenue come in, and then we're having public testimony so we can also hear from the public. But there's no intention of moving, uh, moving that out this week. It's in the committee process. We'll be taking amendments after public testimony, and we'll see how that uh, structure goes. Matt Hers with Alaska Dispatch News. Um, so last year, um, we had, well, I guess for the previous two years, we had a, a House majority and a Senate majority that were relatively, um, I think, ideologically aligned, and we, um, the legislature didn't finish until June, July. Um, and this year, it, we're about a third of the way through and still seeing the House majority and the Senate majority moving in two pretty different directions, the House with oil 
taxes and um, the income tax in the Senate with proposal for a spending cap and uh, you know deeper budget reductions. And I'm just wondering, I mean, what at this point should give the public any confidence that things are not going to sort of end up in the same um, drawn out, painful kind of gridlock that we have seen over the last two years? Well, I, one big difference is that I think the House and the Senate are more aligned on the fact that we have to do something decisive this session. I think that's a starting point. Uh, I don't know that you could point to that last session. I think there was a, a lot of uh, differing opinions on the gravity of the fiscal challenge and the steps that needed to be taken and so forth. This year, um, the fact that the House and Senate are uh, you know, using as starting points different means to get to, I think, the same place that we all want to get to. We want to provide uh, uh, good quality of life for Alaskans and we want to protect the economy and keep uh, the jobs at, uh, uh, intact and so forth. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, every year that I've been down here, uh, whether it's uh, the budget or it's been on the fiscal future or it's been on you know other major legislation, you know, you, you've seen different tax uh, being taken taken by the House and the Senate. And uh, am I confident that at the end of the day we're going to uh, uh, come up with something uh, significant this session? Personally, I'm, I'm I'm very confident. What what those pieces might be, I think uh, time will tell. And you know. Uh, it's as, as we've I think repeated at least a couple times at these uh, press events. It's uh, been 40 years since we as Alaskans have had to sort of, you know, look at ourselves and ask the tough questions about what it is that we want uh, government to provide as uh, important services and how we're going to pay for them. You know, it's been a long time. It's a big, difficult question. And if I could just add, <clears throat> we've got a lot of new folks in in uh, the legislature this year. But we've got a lot of folks who were here last year, and we don't want to be in that same position. And I, and I hope that you know lessons have been taken from that, and, and, and folks are experienced in seeing that you know we need to, I think, communicate more with the Senate, and uh, we need to focus on on common ground wherever we can, and get some successes under our belt so that we can um, create a spirit of working together. And, and I think um, I, had a, I had a meeting with Senator McKinnon the other day and I thought it went very well. And I'm, uh, I'm inspired by that and encouraged. And so we're gonna continue to move forward, so. I think we've got time for one more question. Um, Austin Baird from KTUU again. Um, on the spending cap proposal, I wonder um, the future legislature could overturn a statutory spending cap. So why not just pass it and come back to the issue if we need to increase spending later? Well, I, I guess I'll answer that. Um, you know, the spending cap seems to be directed at trying to control future legislatures and our constitution doesn't allow really that. I mean, we have a spending limit in the Constitution, and we're under that. Um, people, you know, don't like that uh, and want to have a, another way to control future legislatures. My opinion is that future legislatures need to be able to respond to the uh, elements of the time. I mean, we have no idea 10 years or 15 years from now what is going to be happening in the state of Alaska that might need response and requiring a future legislature to, to violate a, a law that we put in to be able to respond effectively to the conditions of the time doesn't seem to me to be the way to go. However, you know, we haven't seen the structure of what they're proposing, so, you know, we'll be looking at that and seeing maybe there's some way that it does make sense right now. I just don't see that it is something that I would want to support, but we haven't seen the, the details of a plan, so it's hard to respond when you don't have a plan really before you. And it, you know, I, I think uh, the, uh, we all know the legislature has been rolling back spending. We, we've been decreasing the amount of money that we've been spending uh, largely in the capital budget as well as in agency spending. I mean, line agency spending right now is down to, I think, uh, 2006 calendar year spending. Um, that's uh, something that I think uh, many in the public perhaps doesn't realize. When you talk about a spending cap, I, I think it really brings forward, uh, uh, you know, the laws of unintended consequences, in my view. Um, you know, what happens, for example, uh, a couple years down the road, uh, we've, we're right at the spending cap, and we have the opportunity to get a large infusion of federal spending, but we need to have X amount of state spending to match that federal spending. 
Uh, what do we do at that point? We go and re reduce essential services so that we can get under the spending cap to bring in a large chunk of money that might be going to our military bases or Department of Transportation or whatever infrastructure that uh, may come our way. And, you know, and I, I worry about passing costs down to local jurisdictions as well. So let's say we're at the spending cap and, uh, you know, those essential needs still remain out there. Do we just pass the buck on to our local governments? Uh, you know, do we pass the, the buck on to community members? Um, so you got to look at all those very carefully before you put a spending cap in place. And again, the legislature has been reducing the budget. I think we're going to do it more this year. And, um, you know, a lot of things to consider when you uh, tackle the subject of a spending cap. And can I just add one thing? Uh, in House Finance uh, presentation yesterday, we were really surprised at the uh, graphic where it was looking at inflation adjusted per capita spending in Alaska. And this is the lowest spending we've had in 32 years. When you adjust it for per capita and inflation, lowest budget per capita in 32 years. So we have um, you know, been working hard to cut the budget, they have been drastic budget cuts, and uh, services have shown that. Thank you. With that, uh, thank you, everyone. We will see you here uh, next week, same time, same place. <laughs>